Hey guys, welcome to our Future Gen channel. My name is Alexander and here with me we have... Zoe. So today we will be reviewing a product from Tinkergen, a product called Grove Zero Car Kit. Now, who or what is Tinkergen? In order to answer that, we'll need to go back to 2008 where it all started with a company called Seed. If you check the About Us page on Tinkergen's website, you will see that it all started in 2008 with a company named Seed. Now, it was only back in 2017 that Tinkergen was founded. Founded to exclusively serve education purposes. First thing you will read on their website is STEM education made simple. This is why it came on our radar because we are all about STEM. They strive to provide STEM education products and contents to primary as well as secondary schools. Now, you might wonder, we are three years later. So how far are they now? And what products do they have available now? Well, they have been busy, that I can tell you. They have products available for ages between 6 and 18 years. We will review their products in the upcoming weeks, starting today with Grove Zero Car Kit. Let's see what is inside. In the box we have one micro USB cable, four markers, a red one, green one, blue one and a black one. And then we have also four modules, existing out of one chassis, one color line follower, one battery, and one main board. All the Grove Zero modules have multi-directional magnetic connections, which means they are easy to connect to each other. There is no requirement for screws or cables. You just snap them together and you can start immediately. The modules are so easy to use that you can build the car in less than 3 seconds. At the bottom of the box we will find three game maps. The first one is where you will need to finish uh, the track with the black marker. We will skip that, uh, but we will try uh, to see if the car is following the black line. Now just have in mind, you don't need any programming because the main board has already, is already pre-programmed. Let's see if it's working. Will it follow the black line? And it does perfect. That's nice. You might have noticed the black dot in the middle of the map. That's actually meant for calibration. Uh, we will do an, uh, another movie in the future for that. How to calibrate the color line follower in case if it's not following the black line uh, properly. Let's have a look at map 2. So for map 2 we will require the markers. Starting with the red marker, uh, we will use the red marker for um, the car to stop. So if it follows the black line and it sees the red color then the car will stop. So let's start coloring. So let's test it. Will it stop at the red color? Dun -dun. Yes, perfect. So it is stopping. That's a good sign. And next one is blue. So for blue, it's supposed to go right. So let's color that as well and see if the car will be going right. Okay, testing. And that works as well. And if it doesn't recognize the color, it will just turn around as you just saw. So the next color is green. Green will make the car go left. And then we have another uh, stop sign as well. So we'll color that uh, too. Okay, testing. So blue was right. That's working. And stop sign is also working as we saw previously. Okay, let's place it a bit further. And green is left. Nice. And it got lost because it doesn't recognize the color, so it turns. Perfect. It couldn't go left, so it went straight here. Again, it turns around. And should be going left. But yeah, it did perfect. Perfect. Nice. Next map, it's a bit more advanced, so we'll need to figure out which colors to use. And we are not uh, required to use only colors because you can also use the black marker to uh, make a line. So, 
you're supposed to start from the start sign uh, then collect all the coins and eventually return back to the start sign yeah so we're coloring it now and let's have a look if it will be working as you saw we're not using the last one color but we're using more a straight line to go back to the start sign and it is working nice now let's go crazy by changing map tree and add more cars I'm not sure if this will end well. Uh oh, uh oh. Okay, okay. More. Oh. It starts to be crowded. Oh no, no, no. Fighting time. So, for our next challenge, we'll be creating a race car. A race car with a wireless controller. Now, what we'll be using as a controller is uh, two twin button modules. And very important to remember when you use two twin button modules on, on one mainboard is that you actually need to number these. So you can, you can do this by using the switch at the back. Uh, the first twin button will number as number one and the second twin button will be number as number two. We will do this twice as we'll be creating two race cars and two uh, wireless controllers. Let's use some parts from our previous cars to build our new race cars and the wireless controllers. So what we'll be needing is definitely the battery and uh, the main board. So we do this twice. Okay. We don't need the other parts. Very easy to connect them together. So we still have the color line floor attached to the cars. We don't really need them for this um, build, but we will leave them on it because it looks cool, yeah? So we have our two controllers and two race cars. Next is coding time. So we'll be uploading the code on both of the cars and the controllers. Uh, how do you create the code? You can basically use the CodeCraft software. It's a graphical programming software. Very, very easy to use. We will create a movie on this later in the future. A movie on how to use it uh, and how to upload the code and etc. The type of connection that is being used is Bluetooth. So what we are doing here is we are placing the mainboard of the first controller and the first car in one group and then we do the same for the second controller and the second car and we place that in another group. Otherwise we'll be controlling each other's uh, car and, and that's not what we want so therefore we just place them in uh, two different separated groups. The same code is uploaded on the car mainboard and the controller mainboard. So let's unplug the hardware and test it. And we have a winner! Here are a few projects that we are working on. These projects are not finalized yet, but let's have a look. The first one we call it Spooky 1.0. Uh, so it's basically a ghost that will be happy and smiling when it's dark. And it will also play as uh, music when it's dark and happy. <laughs> Second project is a silent doorbell, which we use when we are doing our recording, as we don't, we don't want to be interrupted. So how it works is the person rings the doorbell and we will get a message and then we will tell them whether to come in or uh, to stay out. Third project is a distance meter, we call it the Corona distance meter, uh, which is very effective as you can hear it makes some noise when you're too close. 
Uh, it also recognizes when it's a, whether it's a person or whether it's just an object or a wall. It won't make the noise. Uh, only when a, a person or an animal even is close by, it will make the noise. And the distance set here is uh, 1.5 meter. We will also review the Explorer Kit in a future video. The Explorer Kit has 17 modules. Uh, it will guarantee you some more fun and will allow you to use your creativity even more. So, this is it. I hope you liked our video. If you liked it, please subscribe and follow us on social media. See you next time. Bye! Bye.